What's up guys, Kawasaki here, and today I'm going to be giving my thoughts and predictions on TGPW's Grand Princess. This show will be on March 31st at 2 o'clock Japan time, and over in the US it will be around 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and so on and so forth. They will be posting the times for when the show starts in the respective uh, time zone regions, so just keep a look on that. Uh, without any further ado, let's just get right into this because it's going to be quite the show. So, kick things off matches-wise, we're going to have a six-woman tag match between Chika Nanase, Shino Suzuki, and Kira Summer versus Uta Takami, Haru Kazushiro, and Runa Okubo. Then we will have the debut of Ami Yumoto. I believe she's from AKB48. I could be wrong. I need to double check. But she'll be tagging with Nao Kakuta, which will be her final Grand Princess. And uh, these two will be taking on Mahiro Kiryu and Himawari. Then we will have a special six tag with Kayatori Bami and Andre. Andre the Giant Panda, Andres the Giant Panda, with Harun and Echo at ringside. And this team will be taking on Raku and Palm Harajuku. And again, more, a lot of tag matches for this show. But then we'll have Moka Miyamoto and Juri Nagano versus Wakano Urehara and Toga. And in your special singles match, we will have Riga Tatsumi versus Masha Slamovich. And tag team action, yet again. <laughs> We have Aja Kong and Maxine Paler versus Shoko Nakajima and Haven Masao. In another special singles match, we will have Minoru Suzuki taking on Maki Ito. And a special tag team match, we have the return of Yuka Sakazaki. And she will be reuniting with Mizuki to take on none other than Chris Brooks, which will be making his TGPW in-ring debut. And he will be tagging with Emi Sakura. And the first of three tag title matches, we will have Yuki Arai versus Yuki Kamifuku for the International Princess Championship. For the Princess Tag Team Championship, we will have Ryo Mizunami and Yuki Aino defending against Suzume and Arisu Endo. And in your main event, we will have Miyu Yamashita versus Miyu Watanabe. Oh, that's a mouthful. Again, just looking at the cards, there's a lot of tag matches. Okay, we're gonna start off with the opener. Uh, Chika and Kira are your Ch Chika, Kira, and Uta are your newest members of the TPW roster. They just debuted not too recent. I believe it was like last, like earlier this month. Uh, Uta has been announced for quite a while now, and then Kira, Chika as well. I know Uta has had performances with the Up Up Girls. But you have her tag team up with Haru and Runa. And the other two debuts will be teaming up with fellow Up Up Girls member, Shino Suzuki. Uh, this will be quite the interesting intro match. Mainly because you have six very new ish uh, wrestlers that have joined TGPW within the past year. And I know Runa and Haru are like the two quote unquote vets of this match. Well, primarily Haru, because Haru's been killing it lately. <laughs> I know the Haru hype train has been going off. And I know Shino as well. I need to watch more of Chika and Kira. I think Uta as well. Because I know I'm more familiar with Haru and Runa. So, just coming from a default pick with the... Ex I mean, the experience is going to be a mixed bag because Haru, Runa, and Shino kind of started around the same time. But I am going to say Runa and Haru could pick up the win. But if Shino does win, it's going to be Uta taking the pin or it's going to be Kira and Chika taking the pin. They're going to keep Haru, Runa, and Shino not pinned or submitted. Now, going to your tag match, we have Nao and Ami taking on Himawari and Mahiro. This will be Ami's debut match. I, 
haven't, I don't think I've seen anything from her as of yet, at least in regards to like a promo package or like anything on Twitter. I could be wrong, she might have something, and I could just not have been looking. But again, the other news was that now Kakuzo will be retiring this year in July, so this will be her final uh, Grand Princess and one of two final Big 3 shows. Again, she's doing it on her own terms, so again, I applaud to her. So it's going to be sad because I know she's been one of the workhorses of the roster, at least for the mid card. And I know she can pretty much work like anything, everything. She can just throw anything at her and she can work. And Himawari Mahiro, again, now working with the debuting member of Tej. I'm just going to assume they're just going to pick up a win. Unless Himawari eats the pin. Which I'll be surprised. But actually, no, you know what? With AKB on one side, yeah. This is the one's a toss up. For me, it's going to be 50 50. But I could see, I can make it lean more towards Mahiro and Himawari. Now, the next match. I can't believe this is actually happening. We got Andres the Giant Bando and the Bird taking on Raku and Palm. I know Raku and Palm are going to be coming out to TGPW in Philly next week. But they have a fucking panda, a bird, and a cat. Deadly combination right there. We got Team Zoo versus Rocco and Palm. Could have Kraken. I kind of wish Hyper Masao was in this match, but she is. She was in the match last year. So. I could see Bird and Panda win. But that's just me. I like the comedy shit. Leave me alone. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. But it's a good comedic relief from all the action that's going to be going on in this show. Next, we have Makumimoto and Juri Nagano taking on Wakana and Tora. Tora. Toga. Juri is going to be retiring next month. And she only has a few matches left. So we have the returning team of Team Kung Fu Hustle taking on Wakana and Toga. I could see Mocha and Juri win. But I know a lot of people have been riding the Toga and Wakana hype train. So... It would be kind of a cool send-off for Mocha and Jury to pick up the win. I could see it. I don't know, Wakana and Toga can only... They have way more room to grow. So I'm gonna say Mocha, Jury. Next, Rika and Masha Slamovich. This is... It. How do I think about this match? Rika is one of the four horsewomen of TGPW. And she's been. She's been kind of, she's been there. I know she's had her stuff with the uh, Daydream and the Max Hard tournament. But going up against Masha Slamovich. <laughs> I they like, think about it. JCW World Champion, former GCW <laughs> World Champion. <laughs> I know, like, I know Rika's had... I know Rika is the very first Triple Crown of TJPW where she's won the International, the Tag, and the Princess of Princess. She's also won the Iron Man Heavy Metal Weight. But it's... To me, it's kind of like a clash of two different styles. But it works. Masha can work a little more shoot. Rika does a lot of limb work. And I know Rika definitely focuses on leg work. Masha has a lot of kicks and all that. But... I just saw Masha last night over at Kitsune, so it'll be fun. I'll be seeing her. I've seen Masha a lot too. In like contrast to Rika, and like watching Masha's match from Miu or from January 4th's Korokon Hall show, this could be a sleeper match. Sleeper as in like it can pop off without like anyone really noticing, because a lot there's there's some matches that kind of overshadow it. Um, my pick. Is gonna be Masha, and if you're and if you're watching GCW versus TGPW in a week, is it a week from now? Like a week and a half from now, you're gonna have Masha, Rina, Maki taking on TGPW. So like you have all your champions on one side. Rika ain't got no belt, so this will be a fun one. That one I'm kind of looking forward to. But next and 
Again, another tag match. Andre Kong, Maxine Paler, Shoko, and Hyper Masao. Hyper Masao is going to have a lot of comedic shenanigans. While Andre Kong and Maxine Paler are definitely going to be the two big brute powerhouses of this match. And if, you, if you've seen their match that they've had against each other, I think it was Grand uh, Summer Sun? Andre Kong and Maxine Paler, I don't think they have a common ground. Because when they fought against each other, they wanted to, like, tear their heads off. That could be a downfall for them. But if they can work together, they could definitely be, like, quite the team. Man, I'm, I miss Wasteland War Party. I don't know why Heidi didn't get booked for this. But, I mean, Max is definitely booked as the big juggernaut. Like, this big scary foreigner heel, which is what they should definitely be booked as so i'm gonna i'm gonna go off on a limb and i'm gonna say aja and maxine paler are gonna pick up the win on this one show was taking the pin now minoru suzuki and maki ito <laughs> this one when they last shared a ring together they tag team and they took on team eruption now they're gonna be taking each other on in this Maki wanted, or Maki threw down the gauntlet to, Min oh no, was it? No, 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 Minoru threw down the gauntlet to Maki, because Maki wanted Minoru Suzuki at Grand Princess, but wanted to tag team, but Minoru upped the ante and decided to say, hey, I want to go one-on-one -on -one against you, and called her a chicken. <laughs> Maki has had experience with intergender matches. She's took on Kanosuke. She's took on Dan Shoku Dino. She teams with MD. She like her Nick Gage like Team MDK. They take on pretty much anybody. Like they take on Bussy. They can be taking on Danhausen and a secret partner. Uh, they took on Deathmatch Royalty. So Maki definitely has the intergender wrestling match experience, but it's Minoru Suzuki. I know a lot of people know I am the Maki stand, but there comes a time and a place where I don't think that'll help. And this may be the match where it won't help. So, Angry Murder Grandpa, you're definitely going to win this one. <laughs> oh, man. That... Also, Maki is a GCW champion. She won the Extreme Belt off of Joe Janela a couple weeks ago. So they're gonna, they're gonna make, they're gonna book Maki pretty well in this match. But Minoru Suzuki is definitely gonna be way too much. And I know Maki's like freaking out because she saw the match with Marufuji and Kana and Mego Satomura Minoru. So she's like freaking out, like low key. <laughs> Next, Magical Sugar Rabbits reunite. Where has Yuka been? She got signed to AEW. She left TJPW in December. Where the hell has she been? She's been nowhere. I don't know. But she is back. She said she's kind of embarrassed to be back after, like, just leaving. But she'll be taking on Amy Soccer and Chris Brooks. It's like, but... God, no, it'd be like Gato move against Magical Sugar Shits. I know, oh man, okay. This will be a good match. You have AEW wrestlers, Yuka and Emi Sakura on one team, and then, like, on one, like, each of them on, like, one half, and then you have Mizuki and Chris Brooks. With the tag team chemistry with Yuka and Mizuki, this could work in their favor. Not only that, but Yuka is, like, final boss. She doesn't take pins as much as Miyu. If you come to think about it. Or like take losses. Whenever Yuka like has competed the last like year or so. She's only taken the pin in singles matches. She hasn't lost. She lost to Mizuki. She lost to Miyu. That's practically it. Like if you really think about it. Or then like Shoko too. So conclusion. I'm going to say. Mario Sugar Raps are going to have their moment. Yuka and Mizuki pick up the win. Now. Going to your three title matches. Yuki Rai, Yuki Kamifuku, International Princess Championship. 
I know you can call me Fuku has a Singapore uh, one of the belts from Singapore and she is a former international princess champion if you want to look at it on two spectrums for Yuki or I she brings she she draws because she's a part of one of the biggest idol groups in Japan she could bring in like domestic ticket ticket sales like people in Japan would come to see Yuki or I but the downside is she has a limited schedule and I don't think she's ever traveled internationally for wrestling programs. Well, if you look at Yuki Kamifuku, on the other hand, she's worked internationally. She hasn't defended the belt against international talent, but that's mainly because of the whole COVID outbreak. But you can give her the opportunity to showcase that belt around the world. It's like when Maki held the belt. She took that belt all around and she's and she's like defended it like successfully. It was only when she returned to Japan and took on Alex Windsor is when she dropped the belt. Mi Watanabe didn't really defend it. Alex Windsor defended it outside of Japan. Rika even defended it like in like international waters. But for Yuki Kamifuku, she could draw in the international demographics. Not only that, she can draw in the Singaporean demographic because she she holds one of their belts. I think it's the SPW like women's belt or something like that. So you can have Yuki travel international and defend that belt. So this one's a toss up, but that's primarily because of whether or not you want to have more. Like, if you want to have more sales, if you keep the belt on Yuki, then you have talent come to TJPW where you can have it be exposed. But in contrast, if you have Kamifuku on the belt, she can have more exposure with the belt, but that's overseas. It's gonna be 50-50. I'm gonna give the, the small advantage slash I'm picking Yuki Kamifuku to win. This will free up Yuki Arai's schedule from TGPW to focus on SKE48 stuff. That's honestly like the one argument. <laughs> now, Princess Tag Belts. Ryo, the ragtag team of Ryo Mizunami and Yuki Aino taking on Daisy Monkey. Daisy Monkey won the belts at, or they won the number one contender at the Princess, the, was it the Max Heart Princess Tag Tournament. They narrowly lost back in January 4th against Ryo and Yuki. It was those two tag teams against Daydream. Daydream didn't win. I know a lot of people wanted Daisy Monkey to win that and they just kind of had a placeholder because they, uh, Free Wi-Fi had to drop the belt back in December. They had vacated because Yukari Noah wasn't able to participate. So I know a lot of people are on the Daisy Monkey hype train. I am one of them. Like, it, as much as it would be nice to have Yuki and Ryo keep the belts, they can only defend it when Ryo's around. And we've seen that happen with uh, Magical Sugar Rabbits and Free Wolf. Like, you know, Free Wolf, I've only had like, one title defense. But, like, Magical Sugar Rabbits, for example. Like, when Yuki was injured, they couldn't really defend the belts, and therefore they had to vacate it. Suzume and Arisu are always there. Yuki and I know is always there. Ryo, the only really bring in for like special like special shows or even like when Bishki Goon won the belt they're only there like a certain amount of times and I know Daisy Monkey's been getting a lot better I've been riding the Arisu hype train ever since like I started watching Teej so little bias aside I I want Daisy Monkey to finish a damn story I want them to win the belts god damn it Want them to win the belts. Finally, Arisu Suzume have been long overdue for some damn tag title belts. <laughs> or just belts in general. <laughs> but going on to your main event, we have Miyu, Miyu, and Miyu. Miyu Watanabe, Miyu Yamashita. This one's been a long time coming. Last year, Miyu Watanabe defeated Miyu Yamashita in the Prince, was it the uh, Princess Cup tournament? 
to advance to the finals where Miu narrowly lost to Yuka. And Miu winning the belt now. A lot of people want Miyu Watanabe to win. Miyu Watanabe is defi definitely been struggling for a belt. She's held the international. She's held the tag team. She needs the big one. She had her moment last year, but it just narrowly came up short. We could have had, what was it, Mizuki and Miyu Watanabe for the belt over at Wrestle Princess. But instead, we had Yuka Mizuki. Was it no, Yuka Shoko or is it Yuka Mizuki? I don't remember. I gotta look back at that card. But, disregard that. Miyu Watanabe has definitely been on the upward momentum for God knows how long now. Like, it's been a very long time that she's been gaining nothing but momentum. She's always just fell short of the big one. And with Miyu Yamashita being in America for the next few months after this show, because once uh, Tej and Philly happens, Miyu is staying out here, as well as Maki. Maki's staying out in the States, Miyu's staying in the States, Yuka's gonna, definitely going to be staying in the States. So, I would personally have Miyu win the belt so she can actually defend it. Because if Miyu retains, there's going to be like no challengers until, what, May? June? The Princess Cup? Or Summer Sun? Like they've done that before and it, I, I'm just not like a fan. And that's just me being biased. So have goddamn Miu complete the damn story, win the belt, throw some gang signs all over the place. But my pick, Miu Watanabe. So those are my thoughts and predictions on Grand Princess and just my personal thoughts. Uh, we'll be streaming this Saturday. So feel free to tune in. And let me know what y'all thoughts and predictions are in the comments down below. And thank you for watching. Now we'll catch you on the this Saturday. Peace.